because mentally when he's not on, he loses, uh, he can lose matches. We all remember him for what he did in 1991 at Wimbledon, beating three-time Wimbledon winner Boris Becker in a brilliantly played final. That has been his only Grand Slam title. Carl Novacek, probably the least known of the four remaining players in the draw. He's a very sound tennis player. He's solid on the ground. He's a good server. As you can see, he's only ranked 59th. It's the first time he's ever been to a semifinal in a Grand Slam. He beat Medvedev, who was seated eighth here in the second round. I think that got everybody's attention, it, didn't it? It did indeed. And then he, he saved two match points against Todd Woodbridge. It was down two sets to love. The return there from Novacek, and that has been part of his success. Here's how Novacek got here. Lost to one set to Volkov, then a big upset against Medvedev. The escape, two, down two sets to love against Woodbridge, four setter against Frana, and then he served 27 aces in his victory over Isaga, who would upset Sampras. Steve draws even at 30 all here, opening game of the match. Michael Stieck lost in the first round of the Australian Open, second round of the French this year. Thank you. 40 30. And Mary, I think uh, he, he has to feel this is going to be his grand slam. It's his best effort so far this season to make it to the semifinals. He's definitely been slumping in the slams, especially at Wimbledon this year. He lost in the very first round to Brian Shelton. That was a big surprise. It's Love 15, Novacek's first service game. 29 year old from Prague, ranked number 56 in the world. Stieg has had some excellent results in the time since his 91 Wimby win. He won the Masters last year. He's helped Germany win Davis Cup, but last year he lost in the very first round here to a Swede, Henrik Holm. And then, as we mentioned, he lost in the first round of, of the Australian to Malavia Washington. Second round of Paris to Aaron Krixian, and then again, first round of Wimby to Brian Shelton. So th it's about time he had himself a good Grand Slam tournament. He certainly has all the tools, doesn't he? Oh, he's terrific. We saw how much time Novacek has spent trying to get to this semifinal round. An easier time of it for Michael Stieg, as you can see. Straight sets, except for the one set Jonas Bjorkman took from him in the quarterfinal. Got him right in the numbers. Wow, that is some service. Yeah. 40, 50. 106 miles an hour. Just jumped up and hit Steak right in the chest. He's acting as if it was a funny bounce or a bad bounce. You don't see it happen very often that the player actually gets hit with a serve. It is a, the direction of a serve that I think should be used more often going straight at your opponent because they have to worry about getting the body out of the way and still make a shot. Paid off for Novacek. One all. Or even at one all. No, Watch these players throughout this match. We'll see some, uh, some moaning and groaning. They'll argue about some calls. They'll try to look at double takes at calls and ball marks and, and uh, let you know that a lot of things are happening out there that may not be their fault. Steak uh, testing the wind on his first toss in this game, and that's something that uh, we'll certainly try and keep you apprised of. It's hard for us to gauge what's happening down there. It is gusty, though. We it know that. It is gusty. It's just completely different from what blows through up here midway 
in the uh, seating area. And at the top, you can see how stiff the wind is up there, but it's not the same down below. 30 love. 30 love, Michael Stieck. And of course, the usual late arriving crowd. This will be packed as the day goes on. Kind of difficult for the players on the first match. Empty seats, no enthusiasm, no atmosphere, and many distractions. Forty love. One of the advantages of playing the 11 o'clock matches, Vitas mentioned in the opening, is that you know when to eat, when to practice, you know exactly when you're going to go out there. Uh, the players in the second match and the third match, they're the ones that have to try to calculate, and that's more difficult. The women's final, of course, coming up next, next Steffi Groff and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, and then that is followed by Todd Martin and Andre Agassi. It's not that easy from maybe two yards behind the baseline to an outright winner. But you see it lands at a pretty good angle, pretty near the service box. Oh. <laughs> Great shot making by Michael. Point of game four. And chair umpire Bruno Rebu signals that was out. That's Bruno Rabot, and he overruled a, a no call on the baseline. And Novacek is saying he's got to be more careful. That ball is clearly out. And 15 love. Novacek down 1 2 in the opening set. Karl Novacek's good buddy Mats Wielander. They actually won a doubles title in Prague earlier this year. In 88, Mats Wielander and Stefan Edberg were the 11 o'clock match. And they staged a typically Swedish silent protest about having to play at 11. They came out five minutes late. Yes, I recall that vividly. Did they protest when they got their checks? <laughs> no, they, actually, it was a rain. Because of rain, they, they had to play at 10 o'clock in the morning because the matches were set back. As I said, they came out at 10.05. Then they took the dough. Wielander, of course, won three of four Grand Slam titles in 88, getting stopped in the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. Now you're looking at here, Carl Novacek is a very durable guy. Game Novacek, two on even at two. Michael Stieck's wife, Jessica, is a television personality back in Germany. Been married a couple of years. Fifteen love. Stieck's coach, Nikki Pilich, who's also the Davis Cup captain for Germany. Pretty good left-hander in his own right. Thirty. If you want to learn a good service motion, watch Michael Stieck. He, can, he really does it beautifully.
mistake. Stick is my We're on to serve two. in the first set. Love. You know, on, on tour, Novacek is averaging just over seven aces per match. At the U.S. Open here, he's been averaging over 15. As I mentioned, he served 27 in his five-set victory over Isaga. Granted, you're playing three out of five here, but he is serving serving well. He's a big, tall guy. Huh. On the year, he's serving at 57% for his service. Pretty consistent. He's a real workhorse, Carl Novacek. Whereas someone weeks. like Michael Sheik might play about 16 tournaments a year. This guy signs up for over 30. About 30, yeah. 35. <laughs> yeah, he plays he plays as many more tournaments on the average <laughs> than anybody out there. He's won 13 titles, nine of them on clay. Before his run here, Novacek only quality finishes at Grand Slam events or two quarterfinal finishes in Paris. First chance for a break now. Two of them for Stieg. It's the first break of the match, 4-2 here in the first set. And Stieck uh, in the head-to-head -head department, previous matches six times, leads four matches to two in the last meeting in Davis Cup a year ago. Five setter. Goes long. Boris Becker Love had 15. been the Davis Cup hero of Germany for a couple of years, playing singles and doubles. Now Michael Stieck does that. Becker and Stieck are not exactly close, and <laughs> Becker has fallen out, has had a fallen out with the German Tennis Federation, so he hasn't played for a while. Love 30. That goes out. Now a chance, a little bit of a chance for Novacek to break right back. Love 30. Yeah, they found a r running battle, Becker, Becker and Stieck, about. Uh, Becker says, well, he shouldn't be ranked in the top five. He hadn't done that well, and Steak has his own response to that. So, as you mer mentioned, Mary, they're uh, not what you call good buddies. Steak has truly been a, a far better performer in recent years. And in fact, if he does well here, he'll go back to being number two in the world. He had been two. Love all holding. year until he lost in the first round of Wimbledon, and then Goran Ivanišević, who was a finalist there, took Here's over the number two spot. Steak serving, volleying, a very big swing on that high backhand. Then he looks up as if the sun got in his eyes. So three break points now for Novacek to get back on serve. First ace from Steak saves one break point. 15. You know, Steak had an awful lot of double faults against Jonas Bjorkman in the last round, but. Time and again, he would just serve his way out of trouble. And he might do that again here. Two break points saved. 30 40. First Low. serve percentage, yeah, not good at this point. You got to give a little time to settle in and get adjusted. Let's see the attempt by Novacek off this second serve. Oh. Novacek. Ball change. Goes to Michael Stieck. Novacek having broken right back. 
4-3 Stieg lead. Stieg broke himself, really, in that yes, last he game. Did. Loose serving from Stieg into the wind. This stage doesn't mean it won't turn completely around. That's a big shot, again, from well behind the baseline. 15 on. Novacek is actually in a good situation, I think. He has everything to gain, nothing to lose. It'd be a huge victory if he wins it. Take him to his first Grand Slam final. Steak favored to win. He's a beautiful mover for such a tall man, isn't he? Very flexible and supple. He goes from one side of the court to the other, coast to coast, and he makes it look easy. He kept those knees bent even on that shot sort of hooked it ball back down the line got around the outside of the ball to keep it on line. He also handles the low volley well for a big tall guy. He makes the effort to get right down on it. How tall is he? Six foot four. And he only weighs 175. Yeah, he's he's a whippy kind of a guy. I think Tony, don't you also feel that's why his his serve is so good? It's kind of snaky. You know, yes, tensile strength. Yeah. He's got that good, loose, relaxed motion. Picture book. Novacek calls. They're even at four all first set. That's three of five sets men semifinal later today. Andre Agassi and Todd Martin. And next on the stadium court, the women's championship. Steffi Graf and Arancha Sanchez Vicario, numbers one and two in the world. by Novacek but couldn't get anything on it to prevent that overhead. 15 love. Oh. I think in the fashion department we should acknowledge the uh, puce attire of uh, Novacek. I think that might be the first time we've seen that color on the uh, man in the tournament. What kind is that again? Well, I think it's puce. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me it's something else. <laughs> kind of lavenderish. I'm getting lots of help from our. We'll have to refer to our Crayola truck. crayon box. <laughs> 40 feet. Second double fault by Michael Stieg. Still in command at 40-15. You know, to me, there are two types of double faults. Uh, one is when you're trying to really go after a big second serve. The other is when you get a little shaky. He just showed us there what he feels he did wrong, which is which is correct. He just didn't extend himself at all. Shoulders caved in on that. And that stems from a low toss. It's of an ace for Novacek to open this game at 4-5 in the first set. For service. Two coming. Stick has been very impatient from the baseline on Novacek's serve. He, he hasn't been patient at all, kept the ball in play. 40. 
quickly to 40 love for Novacek. Trying to even things at five all in the first set. That was poor racket preparation that time by Novacek. He was hoping the ball was going to go long. He moved the feet, but he had that racket pointing toward the net until the very last moment and had to sort of take a quick swipe at the ball. Indicating that the wind's blowing it this way and that way and going all over the place. If you could put Michael Chang's head on this guy's body, you would have some tennis player. Steak has all the shots. Fifteen all. Are you referring to his uh, strategy, Tony, or or just his uh, lack of mental? Too. He can be very yeah. moody, can't sure. he? Sure. And and you know, I'm not suggesting he's not doing it here, but sometimes you don't get full effort out of him. He gets pouty and argues and and sort of slouches around a little bit. It's not a question of of not playing intelligently but rather not staying together mentally. Well, I know I think at times I don't I question his strategy as well. Great. That is some shot by Novacek from way behind the baseline. Got to watch his racket preparation. He had to have that racket ready early right there. Didn't take a big backswing. Was able to get it back cross court. Wrist snap. See him falling away. Terrific shot. Checks the fourth Czech born semifinalist here, Ivan Lendl, many times, Miloslav Mechir, and Jan Kodish are the others. Oh. And Stieg on the stadium court, opening set of the first men's semifinal of the day. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo and Tony Trabert. Carl Novacek serving. 15, 5, 6. Well, there have been two service breaks, one by each player. One serve here with Novacek trying to get to the tie break. Here's an opening here for Stieg, Love 30. I get the feeling when Novacek is serving and Steaks on the back in the backcourt, he wants to just keep the ball in play, hoping to extract some errors from Novacek. Steak was well outside the doubles alley and able to cut that ball Love off 40. early. Watch where Steak goes to his right outside the doubles alley yet with a wrist pop gets that racket in through and gets a beautiful angle and he's got three set points. Check. He lets this ball go. He's, you'll see he has a play on it. 
So he's right there and he pulls off and it landed at least a foot inside the baseline. So with the top spin and perhaps some wind, Novacek was fooled. <laughs> Steak's ball hit this man who was making a phone call at the time. <laughs> and I think that gesture from Steak was saying, you know, why don't you save your phone call? You might, might not have got hit by the ball. Yeah, watch the man. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you how aware of these players are. And it looked like uh, he took that one right on the sunglasses. He broke the glasses too. I think a little ball. repair. I guess that's what he's saying. He's on the phone with his optometrist. 3015. Oh! 30, you got to watch out for a guy like Steak. When he gets out ahead of you, he can really get rolling. Called, wasn't it, by the center service linesman? Not sure. He just got an explanation from Chair on Fire. Two great shots from Steak at the same point. Difficult backhand overhead. Lays that racket back so he could pop the wrist at it. Now he sets up real nicely. No question about that one. The 15. Game game. And the game on the ace. His second first point game two second set that's long of 15. of 15. He is down a set. Michael Steak winning the first set 7-5. And Novacek had love one here in the second. Not a lot of long rallies. It only took 36 minutes for that set at 7-5. Novacek should really be happy and sparky and yeah. bubbly. I mean, he's in his first Grand Slam semi. He's got nothing to lose. It's Rocky Balboa here. Yeah, just pick it up and just go for broke and just see what happens. When he let that last ball go, you know, the, the badly misjudged ball that cost him the set, he referred to the win. You know, sure. He should just, he should, I, I agree with you. He should. I made a mistake. That's okay. Let's yeah. keep on going. Let's have some fun out here. Yeah. Kenny's in the ideal position, have everything to gain, nothing to lose. Steak is in a tough spot because it would be considered a bad loss for him if he doesn't win this match. Yeah. Novacek, when he defeated Izaga, Said he was just thrilled to be in the semifinal of a Grand Slam. Watch how low Steak stays down now. His knees are bent. Very nicely done for a tall guy to stay down like that throughout the stroke, not lift the knees up, bring the rack up the back of the ball. Point saved by Novacek on a very so gutsy two, second two. serve that would had some pace on it and also placed very close to the center line. And the break for Michael Steak. Two games to two love lead here in the second. 
see Novacek uh, lost to Jimmy Connors in the third round here in 91, defeated third seeded Stefan Edberg in the second round in 93, and upset eight seeded Andre Medvedev here this year. He was part of Connors' big run that year, of course, in 91. And when he beat Stefan Edberg on the grandstand court here last year, Edberg was a two time defending champion. It was very big news. Yeah, he had won 15 straight matches the open here and then was halted. Oh! So he's had some big matches at the open, both good and bad. No, he was seated and Connor's very much unseated when he went down to him three years ago. Looks like he's trying to get himself jazzed up here a little bit. Bouncing around and trying to get himself back into things at 15 all. Oh, great return there from Novacek. I still think when you got a guy that likes to take a nice swing, watching watch uh, Novacek here, the ball is not into the body. He has a clear swing at the ball. If that same serve with that same velocity is directed into the body more, I don't think he can make that shot. Fifteen, fourteen, and like the previous set, gets to, gets a break and then gets himself in trouble right away at fifteen forty. This is when you want to really consolidate things after you get your service break. Good stuff, from Steve about how low he can get despite his height. What a great example there. 30, 40. Here is an ISO watch. He gets down nicely for the low volley real well. Now watch him stay down here. That had a little side spin on it plus some underspin and it curled away after it hit the court. Come on, sir. Oh. Got him back to deuce. Stieg is one of the very few players in the last couple of years who has deuce. twice been able to win titles on all four surfaces. Grass, clay, hard, indoors. And I think it really helps that this guy who's got an all-around game and a very fine sort of volley game grew up on clay and was still able to do it. He moves better. If you're if you're native born on clay, you learn how to serve and volley on it much better than say someone like Pete Sampras, who in trying to win the French Open has not yet found his footing around the net area. Oh, what a return. A blast. 87 mile an hour second serve gets punished severely. Good early racket preparation. You notice Novacek was inside the baseline here, getting into the shot. Nicely done. Another break point. On serve. He's right inside the court. There's no way. There's no space. He's right inside. Yeah, probably he's touching, which is difficult to say, but don't tell me it's inside. It's a very close. Maybe good call. Bruno Rebu, the umpire, is a good one. Here's a look at the serve. Looked like it hit part of the line. Ground strokes by Novacek. 15 love. He's so strong. You know, he can muscle the ballers, you know? The 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 first back and hit was three meters by three yards behind the baseline. 30 love. You're gonna play as much tennis every year as Novacek. You've got to be very, very fit to do it. Right. As you mentioned, Mary Strong, that also is why he does play a lot, because he's the kind of guy that wants to play a lot to maintain his feel and his touch. He doesn't get tired physically. Forty love. Yeah. 
for service. Holes and we are at 2 all. Two Let's go down to Andrea Joyce at courtside. All right, Tim, we're with Mats Vielander, a guy who knows a little bit about this tournament. Won it in 88, and as we mentioned earlier, Carl Novacek is staying with you at your house in Connecticut. What's the best piece of advice you gave him about playing this tournament? Um, well, I, I didn't give him any advice. I'm uh, just It can be distracting, though, to play here with the crowds. Do you talk to him about that? No, we haven't talked about that much. I think that uh, he, he worries a lot about the wind conditions, and uh, it's very windy, especially here in Santa Court. The wind blows around in circles, but uh, uh, the other player also has a lot of problems with it, so I don't know. We haven't tried to tell him to not think about it, but... His first Grand Slam semifinals, uh, do you get the sense that, that he was nervous this morning, or what was his frame of mind like? No, I get the sense that he wasn't nervous. He was very nervous in, uh, before his quarterfinal because he never got into his semis. But I think today he feels like he's playing without pressure. And uh, I think he feels like he has a good chance to win. He was saying yesterday that he was feeling the ball very good in practice. And I think he has a chance to. You guys have a great international look here in this box. Uh, where'd the hats come from? Uh, they come from a company that I'm involved in myself with uh, Michael Pernforce and we're selling them right outside here So if you like them, you can just buy them. It's a good look. Thanks a lot back to you guys <laughs> All right, that's good Brad Gilbert got to sell his book last week and we're helping Motsi with his hats This is a uh, equal opportunity broadcast oh! That's point that's why from Steak Good net, good net coverage by Steak. Gets to this one, can't handle it, trying the most difficult of all shots, stretched out and going back cross court. 42 Third ace. That was at 114. On a gusty, windy day, it's more difficult to serve with good precision because the toss is blown around. So these players haven't gone after as many first serves. Yeah, Mr. Stieg. It's by 3-2-3, three, three, second set, down a set to Michael Stieg. And love 15. Love 15. Folks still arriving here at 12 noon Eastern Time. Won't be long before every seat is occupied here for this Super Saturday action. Ace from Novacek is second. Nope. Serve and volley. 40 15. Game yeah, no match. So three Great race, now. yeah. Three on. Let's look at those serves, uh, Tony. Yeah, I want to show a little comparison of the two. Novacek uh, serve is not as clean. Watch the hitch right here in his wrist motion. Now he has to bring the racket back up to hit the ball, not near to as clean a motion. And if you want to see a real clean motion, watch on the right, Michael Steak. The racket never stops, no hitch. Watch the racket drop, come up, pop through the ball. Just a beautiful service motion by Steak. We just saw him connect on his fourth ace at the previous point with that beautiful motion. First service. Make it five. 
the good servers can serve the ball in any part of the court off the same toss, and that's what makes it so difficult for the receiver. Wow, 119 that time. Split open the center of the court. And it does look very much that toss like the last one. When the player returning serve doesn't even flinch, you know they've been fooled completely. Yeah. An easy game. Ian has a set in hand against Carl Novacek. Novacek serving. 15 love. In all, don't forget the women's championship. Graf and Sanchez Vicario is next on the stadium court. And then later today, the second men's semifinal, Andre Agassi and Todd Martin, in the Battle of Americans, hoping to make it to the final championship match tomorrow here on CBS Sports. Ah! Well, we gave Mats Bielander's hats a plug, Brad Gilbert's book. It's time to give Alan King's Chili its annual note. Great again. Oh. She's not happy with that. He's way out. He's done a, a couple of times today. He's rushed that backhand approach. He's hit it into the net quite a few times, and now he's sailing them long, too. I think he's a bit anxious. Yeah, run through it instead of making the shot first and then worry about getting into a volleying position. If you don't make the approach, who cares what position you get into? Example of when you drive the ball from deep in the court, it stays up above the top of the net. Winners versus unforced errors by both players there. I think there are times when you need to stay in a point by getting the ball back down low and trying to stay in a point to try to hit a clean winner. Opportunity for Steak. 30 40. Steak wouldn't go over that backhand return a few more times off the second serve. Make that ball roll forward helps bring it back down into the court. serving at 52 percent on first serve that's below a season average of 57. Here's a return where he hits top spin. Now what that does is bring the ball back down. You get safety over the net clearance and the tumble forward brings the ball down into the court and you got wind blowing around that helps you. Again, he used the top spin return, and he's now in the driver's seat. If he can hold here, he takes a two sets of love lead and a huge stride towards the final.
15 lat. Novacek doesn't think Stieg served his seventh ace. Thought it was wide. Looked pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks like you got it right there at the T point. Ah. Yes. For Coming into this tournament, Stieg was averaging 6.7 aces per match. He's averaged over 13 per match here, and he already has seven. Yes. And we're still in the second set. Second serve. Oh, yeah. Three set points. Stieg's aces tend to come in clusters. Gets a good rhythm going. Oh. Oh. Another big serve. And two sets. Novacek serving to start the third set. He's down two sets to love. And of course, it'll be Steffi Graf and Arancha Sanchez Vicario, as the newspapers tell us. They'll be on stadium court here to settle the women's championship following this first men's semifinal. It's just what you asked for the number one seed against the number two seed. And then later today, following the women's championship match, number nine seeded Todd Martin of the United States against the unseeded, believe it or not, Andre Agassi, playing very much like one of the top seeds. 40 15. Novacek. Unseated Carl Novacek, Kogel Stieg serving. 15 love. Second game of the third set, 15 love. Novacek won game one, holding serve. 30 love. Watch this toss well into the court by Stieg. Full extension, good wrist snap. He's on his way to the net, but the trip is unnecessary. Yes, nine, nine aces. aces. Yep. yep. Nova check with four. Punt. Michael Stieg evens things up. The number four seed favored to win against the unseeded Carl Novacek. Gets to one all. He's up two sets to this point. You can see the way Stieg is serving straight down the middle the majority of the time in the deuce court, going wide, very little towards the center, towards the body. That's in the deuce court. Court, the ad court, 
Keep going 15. wide to the backhand side. So what he's doing most of the time is trying to go to the backhand of Novacek and it's worked to this stage because he leads two sets of love. Yeah. Here at the U.S. Open, Stieg is 8 and 0 oh when he's won the first two sets of a match. And Novacek in his career has only won one match when he's down the first two sets. Good return by Steak gets it down short. And now the top spin. See, enables that ball to get past Novacek quickly and dip down into the court. end of the court Steak has had quite a few of those backhands just float right on over the baseline when he goes under the ball. Berating himself, struggling a bit in this game. 40 30. <laughs> Novacek had a real good Jeez. serve, missed the volley. That was an easy volley, too, and Novacek has only been into the net 20 times and he's only won half those points. It was a very fine serve, 103 miles an hour, set him up nicely, but he cut under it too much. Sheik in a lot more and much more successful. That's home for him and he likes to go to the net. Advantage. Novacek has the mindset of a clay quarter. He gets well behind that baseline. He's going to rally with you. Hope that you make a mistake. Another break point now for Sheik. This could just about do it for Novacek. Although, you know, in the first two sets, Mary, when Steak has gotten a break, Novacek's broken right back. So Steak not able to consolidate his breaks in the first two sets, so he didn't win both sets. How deep Steak falling backwards on the return of the second serve. That's not the way you'd want to play it, in my opinion. He's also well behind the baseline there. He's more effective, I think, when he's maybe one step behind the baseline in those rallies. Another volley dumped into the net. And he was sitting right on top of the net. That's just bad technique. Well, he's not as comfortable at the net being a clay quarter. That was very loose in the wrist. Not much underspin for control. Oh, that was a 
wonderful half volley that time. Jeez. Here's another big man that bends down nicely here. Watch how well he stays down throughout the shot. So he kept those knees bent. Terrific. You don't have to be defensive on a half volley if you stay down to it. You can be fairly aggressive. Good call. Out. I thought the stink thought the ball was good. And he was a long way from it. And the umpire, Bruno Rabu, right there from France, said, "Good call. It was definitely out." This is a tough angle to, to be able to tell. Yeah, really went to the steep backhand. Okay, Carl Novacek, two sets to love and one two in the third. 15 love in this game. 30 love. Serving volley for 30 love, and people continue to file in here, gradually filling up the National Tennis Center Stadium court. Women's championship ahead. Andre Agassi, Todd Martin later today. The winner here will advance to the final tomorrow to meet the winner of Agassi Martin. Face familiar to Tony Traber and many American tennis fans, your longtime doubles partner, Vic Sages. Vic Sages, great guy. He won uh, the U.S. Championships in 1954, Wimbledon champion, many years at Davis Cupper. We logged a lot of miles together. You pick good partners, Talbert that's, and Sages. Huh? Hey, that's, that's part of the trick. <laughs> that's the, the trick. Get some good horses to ride. I enter. Uh, MC the Hall of Fame dinner at the Waldorf last night and it's an absolute thrill to introduce people like Fred Perry and and Bill Talbert and Gardner Malloy and and all the Aussies Stolle and Emerson and it's a, it's a walk down memory lane. Out. To all Novacek serving here has to get something happening hold and then get Fitch after Michael Stieck. He's running out of games. I don't recall seeing Stieck get so deep behind the baseline Mary as he's been doing this match and there he was trying to make an offensive lob from three or four yards behind the baseline. Thirty left. An ace from Novacek. That's five number for five for him. Yeah you don't want to give up that much court because that, that way you, you can attack from that far back. You, you limit your options. And it's pretty tough to make passing shots from that deep too. You, the ball's in the air so long. You've got to hit bigger shots from lesser positions. Novacek at the beginning of this game was stretching himself out a little bit. He's got a bad back and he wears in fact a sleeve around his waist. Which you sometimes see when he serves. You mean you're not watching the ball? <laughs> well he's in that untucked mode. Easy home for Novacek. He needed it. Opens the sixth game of the third set with his tenth ace, and then comes up with another blast to go 30 love here. And this is a game in which Novacek has to make something happen, and he's back on his heels already. Broken Stieck once in each set. Unfortunately, he's been broken twice in each set to lose them. So it, they've been pretty close. I think you ought to be a little more aggressive, perhaps a little, attack a little bit more. Forty fifteen. Stieck fooled by this one. Tried to make the stiff arm reach for it. No chance. Good 
play again by Novacek. Those are two great lobs. Yeah, two in a row. Terrific. Driving it into the wind with topspin. You can hit this ball pretty hard because you're going into the wind, and the topspin as well brings it down. This part's the easy part. We hit a very short approach. Steak still couldn't make the pass. Halt! Just missed. Michael Steak holds on. Three We're even at three in the third set. Steak going for a new racket. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo, Tony Trabert, and it is gradually filling up. Super Saturday action. First men's semifinal. Steffi Graf and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario are next to settle the U.S. Open Women's Championship. Andre Agassi and Todd Martin later. And in those matches, contrasting styles, both matches. You'll see this time Steak is closer to the baseline when he makes this shot. See, he's right behind the baseline. Much better position to be effective against your opponent. Pressure time now for Carl Novacek. Down two sets, three all, love 30. 15 seconds. Watch this one take Steak well wide. He's falling out of position. Had to try to do something special. Two good serves to the forehand by Novacek, who had been working overtime on the backhand side of Michael Steak, especially in the ad, in the uh, ad court. Yes. He's moving it all around yeah. the box. This game, he's not going for too much. His sixth ace Four comes 110 miles an hour right down the middle of the court. Intelligent serving. Service game for Fine Nova. serving for Michael Stieg, 30 love now. His 11th ace in the first set where he was broken. He was serving at 50% in the second set where he was also broken. It was 65. Now it's 75 in this third set. That's very bad news for Novacek. He's enjoying a great rhythm on serve right now. And he's probably more relaxed leading two sets to love. That helps. Quickly to 40 love for Michael Steak. And they're even at four all. Carl Novacek running out of real estate. Well, in the daycare. Uh, Anika Novacek uh, can keep an eye on Daddy's progress. And she doesn't look too uh, too interested in it. <laughs> it's a riot going into the uh, into the kitty room here at the uh, at the USA National Tennis Center. A lot of players bring their kids, and little Anika Novacek. Fifteen. That's yeah. That's Daddy. Papa. Unfortunately, she might be seeing dead real soon. <laughs> <laughs> no.
Novacek at 15, Love. Blast right at Michael Speak at net and paid off. Early racket preparation. Turns sideways, uncoils, just hits it perfectly. Good upper body rotation to get ready that time. When you coil the body and then you uncoil, you get racket head speed, and that gives you good pace. It's really the difference between hitting a heavy ball and a light ball. Yeah. When we talk about a ball being heavier, it means that you've really been able to get a lot of body into the shot. And you're not brushing up the back as much. You're going through it more. If you brush up, the more spin you add, the less speed you have. Carl Yo Novacek. Michael Steak serving the 1991 Wimbledon champion at 4-5. 15 love. Carl Novacek. 15 love in this game. He's up two sets to love. The favorite here today to make it to the final. Pointed out that he had really improved his service. Uh, those numbers show it graphically. Getting that rhythm. It's 68 percent. Darn good uh, when your serve is hard as Steve's service. Point in and point out. Wins over Olivier Delatra, Steve Bryan, Byron Black, Evgeny Kafelnikov, the exciting young Russian. And Jonas Bjorkman, who upset. Stefan Edberg and Bjorkman looks like he's got a great feature in singles. 40 left. This is 121. This is what it looks like coming at Novacek. You're 78 feet away. 121, it gets in a, a blur. for a third double fall from Steak. There's actually no call here, I don't think, by the side linesman. Look clearly out. I think he's probably blocked off by Novacek. Yeah, Mr. Hey, no matter. 12. Even at five in the third set. Five games off. in love. Tries to insert a little extra pressure here. Once again, trying to hit under the ball, he runs right through it. It just floats it long with the wind at his back. Gave himself a headache. <laughs> See how he's chopping under the ball. If he goes over that shot as he's capable of doing, he doesn't have to take a big back, so we just cover over the top of the ball and stay in for him. Stieg's backhand has been his 
biggest single problem today. He's had 17 errors off that side. Novacek has gone there quite a bit. Third oh. That's a bad error right there. Wasn't trying to do that much with the ball. And I don't think you can blame the wind, but at any rate, danger time here. Five all, 30 all. Here. Could be much like match point. Gray Steak's been holding. Yep. That's an ace. Jeez. Seven for him. Steak gave it a double look, just hoping it would be out. Oh. Another good serve for Novacek and another faulty backhand from Michael Steak. Set has Michael Steak trying to get to the tie break. Five six here in the third. He's up two sets over Carl Novacek and 15 love. Steak really closed in well behind his third. When you see that ball floating, you want to go to it. Don't wait for it to come to you. Forty fifteen. Steak has twelve aces, but we don't have a number of how many freebies he's gotten where Nova just gotten his racket on, so he's had a lot of free games. Because of that good serve. There's another legit ace. Tiebreak time, third set. Six games over, third set tiebreak. No one check just tiebreak. The first player to reach seven, at least a two-point advantage, will be the winner. They're both in the positive side in their tiebreak records. Baseline four inches wide. The other sidelines two inches wide for easier calling. That caught more of the back line than Novacek wanted it to. Two serves coming to Michael Steak. What a return. Yeah. That was beautiful. Novacek had such a good feel for where that was going. 103 miles an hour, and he still was One able long. to take a very nice full swing at this ball. Bang. Came back in a hurry, didn't it?
pulled up on that one. 3-1, Stig. Maya Novacek uh, watching her husband struggling here. 1-3 in the tie break, trying to stay in the match. He puts the pressure on Novacek. 4-1. Gets it down, comes on in. Good play. Oh! These guys are 2-2 two -two in tie breaks against each other. And 5-1 in the tie break. Players change ends after five six one. points. Steve. Pressure put on. He tries to flick that one with the wrist and goes well long. Here's Steak. Gets down nicely to volley. Watch the quick hand. Short motion. When you're in there and they're gunning that ball at you, you can't take much of a backswing. You use the pace on the ball that's coming to you. Turn from Novacek. A break. It hits the top of the net. 5-2. Watch this one hit the net as it comes over. Jumps up. And throws a timing off for Stieke. He still had time to handle it, but couldn't. Steak retreated Final about three, three big steps Steak. behind the baseline to return the second serve. Forehand side. But Sheik does keep drilling fine it there, hole. and Novacek Sheik. comes up with a great shot. That's a very fine pass. Three consecutive points for Novacek, drawing him to 5 4. Sheik has two serves here, remember, so he can serve this out. And he's got one of them. He's at match point. 6-4. Steak. Jessica, Coach Nikki Pillich, pleased with this performance as Steak has gotten stronger and stronger as the tournament has gone on. This is his best ever U.S. Open. Previously, he made it to the quarters in 1991. A good tournament for number 56 ranked Carl Novacek, his I first ever Grand Slam semifinal. Could I get a Coke, please? And a happy Michael Steak, obviously. Let's do it. Really, really difficult to find the rhythm for the shots. Plus, Michael was uh, 
playing uh, his tennis means serving and volleying. So I was I didn't have a time at all to to get into my game and uh, find my shots. So um, you know I, it was really difficult for me to get into the match today. Overall, though, in the bigger picture, this has been your best Grand Slam showing ever. Your first Grand Slam semifinal. What kind of an experience has this been like for you? I think you described it the other day as a dream. Well, uh, it's been a great breakthrough because I've, I reached the quarterfinals three times, but here I was just able to pass it. And even if I lost today, uh, it was a great achievement for me to be in the semifinals of a Grand Slam. And uh, yeah, it's something which uh, I was kind of dreaming about. Well, we know you've missed this tournament before in the past, but we hope to see you again here next year. Thanks very much and congratulations. Back to you, Pat. All right, Andrea, thank you very much. Michael Stieck has joined us uh, here on our set. Congratulations. Thanks for Thanks coming for in. Very crisp, very smooth today. Yeah, I was very happy. It was tough to play. The wind was quite difficult to, to get uh, used to, and especially at the net. And all the breaks that came in, I think, uh, came with the wind. So everybody played with the wind much better. But I'm very happy. I surfed much better than I did uh, two days ago when I'm in the finals. Earlier this week when you talked to Pat and myself, you said that, you know, this may not be your favorite service, but you're starting to learn to find a, a pleasant rhythm for yourself. What specifically have you learned to improve your game so drastically this year on the hard courts? You know, n normally I'm used to, to rush much more my shots. You know, I think I had to get into the net as quick as I could, and that makes you just, you know, that's back and slice. You rush it too much. You're trying to get into the net of positions you should never come in. And this year I just tell myself, I mean, you, you are capable of staying back, playing from the baseline, playing four, five, six shots, and then pick your shot to come in. And uh, that worked really well, and my surf helped me out most of the times, and just that mixture of game just uh, made it good. Let's take a look at a couple of points here. You said the wind was bothering you a little bit today, Michael, but uh, not much else uh, went wrong with you today. No, I was moving pretty good, and uh, you know I was very focused on you. I just had to you know, stay up on my surf and really concentrate on my service games. And every time I was up a break, he started to break back, and I made a couple of bad, bad uh, volleys there, and that was bad that was by him there. Yeah, but that was a win too, I man. He thought it would, it would go wide. I hit it a little off the frame and just dropped in, and it was really tough to play out there. But uh, it's the same for both players, and uh, I got a better start there. And to winning the first set always helps a lot, especially under those conditions. Has the weather been cooler this year than the past couple of opens? Been a little bit less grueling physically playing out there? For sure. It was not so humid than it used to be, and it was not as hot. So I think it's, a, it, it's great weather to play tennis, except the wind should be a little bit. Uh, less but uh, we can't uh, uh, choose that so uh, but it's, it's better than the last couple of years it's a tie break yeah. match point yeah i like that that's a that's, 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 that's the highlight really you want to see tomorrow <laughs> i can't relate to that because i never ended a match in the days <laughs> Let's see. That's the best way, especially for me, because I didn't serve so well the two days ago. Well, you're having a picture perfect, uh, tennis perfect, uh, really U.S. Open so far. You haven't lost a set yet. Uh, how strong do you feel, and how, how optimistic are you about tomorrow? Hey, if I wouldn't be optimistic being in the finals, again, I, I would be in the wrong place, and uh, I'm there. It's, it's just a great feeling. I didn't expect it to be when I came here, but now I'm just there, and uh, I want to take the championship. I'm going to try everything. If I play somebody who plays better than me, I have to uh, accept it, but I'm going to give it the best I can and just uh, get every ball I can get uh, back over the net. We like to know everybody's social schedule now. What's your plan for the rest of the day? Will you watch the uh, second match? No, I will be going back, take a nice nap because I had to get up very early this morning and then just go for a nice dinner. And my family came in today. My parents just came on for a visit and uh, just uh, easy and relaxing. One more match to play and then I can take as much time off as I want. Uh, how do you see the next match from a player's perspective between Agassi and Martin? Um, uh, normally I would say that Andre would win this match because I was not too impressed with Todd when he played against Burnt, but he didn't play well and he won it pretty easily still, so he must be very confident with the way he was playing. He won his match is not playing great tennis and Andre is you know, very high on his um, uh, the way he's playing tennis right now, and it's going to be a very difficult match, especially with the wind out there, because it's going to affect both players. Where are you having dinner? Maybe Venus and I'll drop by. Really. by Infinity Luxury Automobiles. Infinity is everything that's possible. The day dawned brightly, a perfect day for tennis, but nobody could have imagined just how perfect the tennis would be. Cash and Yvonne Lendo waited for Stan Smith and John Newcomb to finish their seniors match before going to war in the first men's semifinal. And oh, what a lovely war it would be. <laughs> the 
The 19-year-old upstart from Down Under was playing the match of his young life. Leading 6-5 in the fifth, Cash was serving for a place in U.S. Open history. The Australian had clawed his way to the brink of a huge upset. was denied and the talented teenager was forced into a tie break after Lendl's prayer was answered. I remember I got very lucky that day. I didn't have my racket ready for the forehand with a backhand grip in my hand and uh, some, that's why I went for a lob and it went in somehow. I still got to it but uh, you know so I think I was so surprised that, that he got it that uh, you know I missed, I missed, the, uh, missed getting the ball back into the court. The tie break roused an already passionate crowd to the edge of its seats. Lendl had taken a 5-4 lead. Now it was Lendl's turn at match point with cash to serve. Sets. Three hours and 39 minutes later, Yvonne Landel earned a trip to the finals. Pat Cash experienced the disappointment of a lifetime. It was so close. It was just, uh, you know, one point in it. And that's just the way it goes. Day was now turning to dusk when the women finally took center stage. Martina Navratilova and Chris Ebert. started strongly and found herself poised to break Martina for the first set. Although Chrissy won that battle, this war, too, was far from over. just beat me, you know, pretty easily. And I think after that first set when I won 6-4, you know, I realized and she realized and the crowd realized, hey, there could be an upset brewing here. But Martina was determined. She captured the second set and jumped to a 3-1 lead in the third. Tina prevailed in a three-set classic. Just can't get to it. Martina Navratilova. A classic between these two longtime friends and rivals. I can't think of any other loss at the U.S. Open. Um, that was more devastating. You don't mind losing 6-2, 6-1 because somebody's just too good and you get wiped off the court. But when you lose a close one, those are the ones that really hurt. Darkness had already descended and still the main event had yet to be staged, Connors and McEnroe. I remember every match went the limit. You know, by the time I got on, I was, uh, I'd been, I'd played five sets myself. The long wait apparently had little effect on McEnroe who came out smoking. took the first set and Connors the second. The fray was just beginning. In the third, it was McEnroe. Then Connors took command in the fourth. Game fourth set. Connors is out.
There would be no knockout. This fight was destined to go the distance. And they say they're best for last. and 16 minutes after the tennis began, the day was finally over. The night belonged to John McEnroe. Great man, great man. But the longest day belonged to the ages. The best thing about that day is that after that match was over, my son walked out on the court almost like now, who cares if you won or lost, Dad? Let's uh, let's go home and, and uh, do what we have to do. It was a heck of a day of tennis, probably the greatest day of all time. I played the Open for so many years, and I can't remember a day like that. I suppose it was a fantastic day. I mean, could have been a little bit better for me, though. <laughs>